cowboy style of life is just different from, you know, living in a big city and having a suit and tie. And, and uh, you know, we're all about Jesus here, but we wear our cowboy hats and our boots. And we have a heart for the youth in college here in Weatherford. We do buckouts and bull rides and team ropings and calf ropings and anything to do with arena events. We have a ride every uh, third Monday night of every month. And uh, tonight we're going to just buck some bulls. We're going to have a little word. Uh, the rule is you need to be here by 7 o'clock and then we can say Jesus paid your fees and, and you get to ride for free. It's just like heaven. If you don't accept Jesus, uh, before the gates close, then you don't get in, and it's the same thing. We're going to look at uh, Mark, the 10th chapter tonight. Then in the arena, it's simply, uh, it's time to just get real. That was a good rush. Get on the next one. We spend time with the kids. We don't just uh, get here and disciple them and, t and preach at them. We work behind the bucking shoots with them. Other than that, uh, it's, it's church. It's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and, and make use of it. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. Is he worthy? So we just sang about it, right? He is worthy. Hallelujah. Who led you to the Lord? Anybody? Anybody? Who led you to the Lord? Well, it wasn't me for all of you. Who led you? Tanya, who led you to the Lord? Praise the Lord. Diana Stover, who led you to the Lord? Hallelujah. Wendy Wells. Your grandmother. Oh, that's so precious. Who led you to the Lord? What a precious gift. Amen? Those people that led us to the Lord. Amen? It was my foster mother. Led me to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now my parents, right? You know, God will make a way. No matter what, he'll make a way. It may be through you, right? Maybe you in the future that when a pastor stands up in church and asks who led you to the Lord, they're going to say, Jaden Smith led me to the Lord. Catherine Carlton led me to the Lord. 
Cashly led me to the Lord. Amen. Our children, when we talk about our children, are the inheritance that we leave, right? Our legacy. And what are we, what are we giving them? Amen. We are standing before our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, as we have that present today. And we are leading them in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, as, as I think about that all the time, I always let the Lord know every day, I'm ready. If you have somebody that I need to lead to the Lord, Father, I'm ready. Just put them before me, right? I count it all joy. My, the greatest thing I can do in life is share that and have somebody who doesn't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and doesn't know that that's the way to eternity and through all this, right, that, that we may or may not be dealing with day in and day out. And so think about that tomorrow. Amen? Hallelujah. I have the wrong Bible. Oh, my goodness. All right, here's, here's one. Let me see. They're all the same. They're not. All right, let's see. Yep, thank you, Jesus. All right. Well, I found this giant print. I think you all can read it from there. I was like, it's pastors. I was like, wow, look at that. And so I, I got sidetracked. I apologize. So um, you, ever, you ever feel like you're in the wilderness? Who camps in here? Let me see some campers like to go camping. Right, I'm going to rephrase it. Who doesn't like to go camping? Okay, so, so. Toy doesn't like to go camping. All right. So, Tanya, why don't you like to go camping? It's too much work. Toy. You have a comfortable bed at home. Kimberly, why don't you like to go camping? And a bathroom. There is a bathroom in the woods. Hallelujah. Comforts of home, right? That's why I keep I, the comforts of home. We live in such a time as this. Amen. 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 But the, you know, as Agnes so eloquently pointed out, that there was there was there were people that went before us, and there are people that go before us every day that I never I never forget. Even though my son serves in the military, um, I never forget what. A privilege it is to live the life we live. Amen. The freedom that we have. I do not take it for granted. That's for sure. But um, today I, I kind of want to look at that. I want to look at the wilderness. Um, and that is my message. And my message is help me through the wilderness. And so I looked it up. So the very definition, and so all three of you were ex exactly right. The definition of the wilderness is an uncultivated, uninhabited, and inhospitable place to be. A neglected or abandoned area, a position of disfavor, especially in political content. And so uh, that was the definition out of the dictionary. I didn't make it up, so I looked it up. And, um, you know, I think about the wilderness. And, you know, as a child, because we lived in the mountains, and I loved exploring. I'd go out. We'd go out in the wilderness, right, and climb trees and get bit by bugs and come home and have to have ticks taken off of us. And, I mean, just all, I, I just, I loved it. But I am an explorer by nature. And I think people that are explorers by nature love nature. Love, you know, it's, it's not a big deal to rough it. Um, do, do I like a nice air mattress? Oh, yes. I do when I go camping. I do. I, I love a fifth wheel or a motor home. Even better. So I think that this would be said to be true if... if, if um, if we all had a really nice motor home with all of the comforts of home and you go out and you park on a lake and you just sit there, that is one of my favorite things to do is to go to a lake and, you know, go out and it's cold and crisp and, and, and eat breakfast outside and then go back in where it's warm, you know. But, but um, I, I do enjoy it. 
and get a coa, Donna. Forget the cold. Forget the cold, she says. So um, just, just visiting it all. You know, um, I love when we moved to Texas. I, I love Texas weather. I do not complain about it. If I get ice, if I get snow, I do not complain because I know tomorrow the sun's going to shine. <laughs> Maybe next week, but it is going to happen. And so uh, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, I, I don't want to live in Michigan unless the Lord sends me there. You notice how I, I stated that, right? Because the last time I told the Lord I didn't want to do something, I got to do it. So I always, I always put that out there. So in the wilderness... So I looked at a few things, and, you know, um, if you're in a place that you really don't like where you're at right now, uh, when maybe this is somebody that's watching by Internet, or maybe somebody that's here, but there's something going on in your life, and you don't like where you're at right now, um, know that God won't leave you where you are. Amen? He will not leave you where you are. And so um, don't, don't, you are the chosen. You are not the frozen right? You are the chosen. You have a promise. We talked about this in Sunday school this morning, and um, I don't always go to, get to go to Sunday school, um, and, and when I have children's church, and, and uh, I'm doing the, and doing the ministry there, and so I'll pop in from time to time to um, just sit under what that the Sunday school program is about. It is an amazing program that um, can be taken home and studied. And so uh, for our visitors or those that are here today, uh, we will make a copy of our Sunday school book for you if you want to do it at home. I would encourage it. Um, in fact, they are in Zechariah right now, which is where I have been studying. The Lord has been, I've been camping in Zechariah 11 through 14. And it really talks about as, um, a min as somebody, not necessarily in the ministry, but somebody that is saved in the times that we live, the world needs us. The world needs you to make a difference. He needs our youth to know who Jesus Christ is. He needs, he needs when they go to school for them to have that protection, right? Because the enemy, he is ruthless, amen? So I hope you're praying for our public schools. I hope you're praying for, for the children that are out there that don't have the families that you that are protecting them by the word. Amen? Hallelujah. Turn over to Numbers 13. Verse 16... 17 through 20. And I'm going to be ministering out of the New King James today. Hallelujah. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up into the mountains, the wilderness, the mountains, and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. And then he says, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land and, of course, this is the time of the first, first fruits. So this is the time of when the grapes are coming into season. And so for the majority of us that have, you know, studied the word for quite some time, we know this story as they are going to be going into the promised land, and they've come through that time. And Moses, the Lord told Moses, he said, go look and see what I have prepared for you. What has God prepared? He's prepared something for each and every one of us. Something stands before every single person that's in here today that has been prepared for us, this, this life we live. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are in it, whether it's your job or you're at home or you're in school or you're learning or you're retired 
or, you know, whatever it is you're doing, there is this life that we live. Amen? He didn't create us to just be born and die. He created us to live this life he created, this world he created for us. He created so that we could enjoy it. Amen? And so then there's the enemy, right? And so he just wants to ruin everything. And he's been trying, but we know the end is near. It's in Revelation, so it's real near. So you can just go read about it, right? So we know that it's coming. Zechariah talked about it, and I think that's where the Lord really has, has had me in it. And I really have just been praying, how can I make a difference in the midst of turmoil? How can I make, how can I make a difference when there is, there is so much fear and doubt and unbelief being spoken out there? Because if the word is in us and it comes out of us, the word will always accomplish what it has to say and what God purposes for it. And so we want to concentrate on the good things of God. We want to concentrate on the promises of God. Amen? Amen. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. And so again, you know, they brought out, what does it say? That he brought out huge it took two people to carry a group of grapes out you know and so they brought out and the promises god would not have sent them into a territory of worthlessness he made them a promise he's made us a promise amen he made you a promise don't let go of that if you don't have a promise ask him for one you know, Moses decided at this point, and so when you study before this scripture and after this scripture, you know, Moses decided what information was needed um, before the people could enter the promised land. So he sent them out. You know, the Lord told him to go check it out. And so he took the Lord's advice. It's a good thing to take the Lord's advice, you guys. When he tells you to do something, go do it. Don't, don't wait. Just go do it. And, and this has been taught a couple different ways. So you got to, you know, he, he did send them out to look at things to see how things were going to be. But it wasn't whether they were going to go in or not, just to see the promises of God and how great they were. Hallelujah. He took careful steps to get that information. When you're making decisions or assuming a new responsibility with something that's going on, you do want to remember these two steps that he did take here as well, though. Ask yourself what you need to know about the opportunity that's standing before you, and then obtain the knowledge that you need. And that's what he did. Common sense is a valuable aid in accomplishing God's word and God's promises. Amen? I made a note here. Proverbs 12, 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. In Proverbs 15, 22, it says, Without counsel, plans go awry. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Amen? And so we, we, we hopefully, our children can come to us when they need to do something. That, that we are their counselors. Amen? And so, as adults, who do you seek counsel from? Aside from God. Aside from God. Do you have other people to help you with those decisions? Amen? You know, and for those that, that don't know me, my parents died when I was very young. And so, uh, the Lord has always instrumentally, though, put people in my life to assist when I need it, but I also know I need them. I know that I need, I don't know it all, but I know that he has people that know what I need to know. Amen? And he has people for you as well. And I know a lot of times, you know, it's not till we're older that we realize how wise our parents were. Or maybe they weren't. I'm sorry if they weren't, but for the most part. You know, um, and so we always talk about, you know, that, that our grandparents knew things. I love to listen to Tanya talk about her grandma. And um, 
how she didn't realize that she knew the Holy Ghost and how she looks back over that and how God instrumentally has put that in her life. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> God told the Israelites that the promised land was rich and fertile. Not only that, he promised that his bountiful land would be theirs. Then the scouts reported back to Moses. They gave plenty of good reasons for entering the land, but they just couldn't stop focusing on their fears. And that is the only thing that stops us today are the lies of the enemy and the putting fear before us that, and I, I said earlier, you know, we are the chosen, we're not the frozen. And I think that we're seeing, we see a lot of that right now. The church needs us. The church, you know, the community. The church community needs us to not give in to the fear that gets projected day in and day out by society. Amen? And we have to, we have to, you have to, but the promises of God, there you find the words so that you can speak it in love. Now, you know, we're not coming against it. We're moving through it, and it has to separate. A negative opinion of 10 men caused a great rebellion among the people because it is human nature to accept opinion versus fact. I always like it when I repeat something I saw on Facebook. or Because you know it's wrong. Google doesn't know everything, right? Hallelujah. YouTube doesn't know everything. Hallelujah. But 10 men, 10 men caused rebellion. A millions, right? How many were in the desert? It was a bunch of people. Fear is like that, though. In uh, Sunday school today, Bud was talking about leaven and how the word talks about it in that a little bit of leaven in, in dough if when it goes in and it does what it's supposed to, if you don't watch it, it will explode. So he was asking me as a bread maker to, to share that. And I thought of Kelly, though, but I, 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 I've seen my starter. It just overflows because I wasn't paying attention to it. And then, you know, you have to start all over again. That's right. But the reference that it was talking about with the leaven, it was talking about with them that were going uh, in the New Testament to go to town to get some food for Jesus, was to be careful of the sin. So the reference of leaven was sin, because just a little bit of it, a little bit of complacency. Let's use some different words. We can use some different words. There are different things that will stop us from accomplishing the promises of God. Fear, Doubt, unbelief, complacency, um, not trying to be kind, not trying to be loving, right? Those things are not them. We can always overshadow what's out there. These days, and maybe not for you, but these days, I have to do more of it. It's a little harder sometimes than others. Things can kind of get on, you know, weigh, it weighs on you. We've been dealing with sickness and disease since Genesis, right? And so it is, it is no different today than the days of past. And so I look to the word to get my strength, to pull me through it, and to receive the wisdom and the knowledge, because isn't that what, what I talked about earlier? You know, that, that wisdom and knowledge is what he was looking for. We must be especially careful when voicing our own negative opinions. What we say may heavily influence the actions of those who trust us. Turn over to Proverbs 15. This is where I needed my other Bible. Proverbs 15. 
So I'm going to talk a minute about the author of Proverbs, Solomon, king of Israel, was the son of David. He reigned for 40 years from 970 to 930 B.C., taking the throne at about the age of 20 years old. No doubt influenced by the psalm writing of his father, Solomon has left us more books than any other Old Testament writer except Moses. It seems probable that his Song of Solomon was written when he was a young romantic. His Proverbs when he was mature at the height of his powers and Ecclesiastes when he had become more aged, more inclined to philosophical conclusions, and perhaps more cynical as you read through them. His strengths were not on the battlefield, but in the realm of the mind, meditation, planning, negotiation, and organization is who he was. And so as you read Proverbs, and this is in the front of... um, the Spirit-Filled Life Bible that I just read out to you about the author and and the background. And um, I look at how he talks about the content of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord, um, we, we look at the fear of the Lord is a good thing, right? I hope so. We, we, we have people talk about it that it's reverence, so we don't fear him. We don't fear. We're not afraid of God. But I also, I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want to let him down. I want to make my father proud. Amen? And so that's when when I look at this and I look at that, yes, no, I don't want to go to hell. So, no, you know. But I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Do you? Do you know him as your Savior? Do you know him as your Lord? And so we have a lot of people that have received salvation. And in field ministry, this is the one thing that the Lord spoke to us. When we first started doing field ministry and traveling out into the Western world was, um, let's see, how long have I been married, Fonda? 26 years? 25. 25. David's watching. We're going to call him afterwards. Apparently we were dialing a wrong number. Um, But... um, you know, the Lord really ministered to us because we'd go to rodeos and horse shows and, you know, and there's like this little tally in, a, in, in ministers' traveling handbooks. How many people stood up and received Jesus Christ today as their Lord and Savior? But then the Lord told us, he said, who is teaching them? So they're saved. But this is where we look at salvation. Yes, it's important. But keeping that salvation and making it strong is the, what we all do every day. You, you help people with their very salvation to make it true and strong. And a new Christian can be somebody who just converted to the Lord is easy pickings and pray for the enemy if there isn't a support system there to help him. And so that's when the Lord starts putting people in their path, just like he did with me as a, as a 14-year-old child. He put people in my path that would, that would watch out for me and care for me and talk about Jesus and talk about God and talk about, even though my parents had been killed, that, that God had a plan for me that I didn't understand at that time. You know, and so in studying through Zechariah, the minute I got to Malachi, the first part of that scripture talks about, and the people of Israel started doubting that God even loved them. And I, I think I hear that a lot these days. Where is God? Why is this still happening? What's going on? How are we going to get through this? You know, and, and, and it starts building. And then all it takes is us to step in and say, oh, no, no, there's hope. This is not, this is not the end of this. This is but God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And so um, Proverbs 15, which is where we were going, We're going to go all the way through it, Sherry. Okay. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness 
in it breaks the spirit. And this is why I said it's so important that we keep our words true and our, our words above the ways of the world. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. In the house of righteousness there is much treasure, but in the revenue of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, and the heart of the fool does not do so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. It says it again. But he loves him who follows righteousness, talking about God. Harsh discipline is, is for him who forsakes the way. And he who hates correction will die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. So how much more the hearts of the Son of Men. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him, nor will he go to the wise. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than a great treasure with trouble. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted calf with hatred. A wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger allays contention. I want another word. I was searching for it. I was going to transfer it somewhere. The way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns, but the way of the upright is a highway. A wish, a wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment, but a man of understanding walks uprightly. Without counsel, counsel plans go awry. I mentioned that scripture earlier, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. The way of life winds upward for the wise, but he may turn away from hell below, that he may. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the boundary of a widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. But the words of the pure are pleasant. He who is greedy for gain troubles his own house, but he who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer. The mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoice the heart, and a good report makes bones healthy. The ear that hears the rebukes of life will abide among the wise. He who disdains instruction despises his own soul. But he who heeds rebukes gets understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So I know the microphone told me I had six hours. So we're not going to talk about every single screen. Uh, uh, there's probably uh, quite a bit of study within this, and I would encourage you to take a look at it. The one thing that I want to, a few things that I want to focus on today um, that I talked about, let me move this a minute, was in um, verse 3. And, you know, at times it seems that God has let evil run rampant in the world. And we wonder if he even notices what's going on. I think people, I hear, what I, when I hear people talk, this is what I, I'm hearing. That again, that, you know, why isn't God stopping it? If, according to the word, there comes a point in the end times where it says that things will grow worse. Right? So, depending upon what you believe, if we're in the end times then a lot of what we're seeing was foretold. Amen? It's foretold. 
But we see, we have a promise, though, as new as Christians. We have a promise that he's still going to watch over us and he's going to take us through this and we're going to come out okay. Amen? We're going to come out okay. Victorious. Amen. And it, it, it says in here, God sees everything very clearly. God, God is not confused and he is not the spirit of confusion. So the minute I start feeling confused about something, I know that the enemy is talking. So, because um, he's not the author of it. Both the evil actions and the evil intentions lie behind them. He understands it. And so when you go to God and you ask God about stuff, it could be that that is the case, that there is just evil. Because there is. There is just evil out there. Right now his work may be unseen and unfelt in a lot of areas. But he cares for us, and he cares for this world, and he cares for his creation. Amen? And so, um, you know, one day it says that he will wipe out evil and he will punish evildoers, just as he will establish the good and reward those who do his will. And so we just have to stay focused on that. We just have to stay focused on what God has told us to do. We keep moving forward. We, we love people. We, we help them as best we can, but we keep on moving. In verse 14, he talked about, um, and, and, and what I saw in this is, it is so important what we feed our minds. And so, I, you hear me, I joke about it, but I don't joke about it. I don't watch the news. I like the weather, because I like to know if they know what they're talking about sometimes. Maybe, maybe they're going to be helpful, but I, I, I make fun of that too. And it, it is just because there's so much adversity, and there's so much hate, and there's... There's just so much going on out there that they feed through it that some, if you get too much of it, it's just hard to decipher, and it starts weighing on me in my heart. And, and, and it's not to be ignorant because I do pay attention, and I do look at that, and I listen to a little bit of it, and then I stop. But what we feed our minds is just as important as what we feed our bodies. The kind of books we read, the people we talk with, the music we listen to, the films we watch are all part of our mental diet. Be discerning because what you feed your mind influences your total health and well-being. A strong desire to discover knowledge is a mark of wisdom. And so I'm always learning. And that's why I said I don't know everything. You know, I'm always learning. I'm always seeking instruction. We saw a pattern as we, I read through that one particular proverb, how the Lord just kept reiterating in there that um, we need to be careful and watchful and mindful of the things that are out there and not let that enter into our life. Just like, that's why Sunday school, when, when we were doing Sunday school this morning, and I hadn't read ahead. Um, and so if you don't read ahead, it's okay. Come anyway. So Bud will pick on you, but he'll let you off the hook in a few minutes. Fond will bail you out. That's right. Praise the Lord. And so, but it was just about that same thing. It was just about that same thing. How just a little bit of, of all of the adversity that's going on can really affect us. In 15, uh, it talks about our attitudes color our whole personality. When you study that scripture out and what the writers were talking about here, what the writer was talking about here and the times that they lived in, we cannot always choose what happens to us, but we can always choose how we react to what happens to us. Amen? Our attitude towards the situation is our power. The secret to a happy heart is filling our mind with thoughts that are true, pure, and lovely. Thoughts that dwell on good things in life, just like Philippians 4.8 says. And I think most of us can quote it by heart. Pastor loves that scripture. This was Paul's secret when he faced imprisonment. And it can be ours when we face struggles in our daily life. Look at your attitude and then examine what you allow to enter into your mind and what you choose to dwell on. You may need to make some changes. And that's why I changed how I listen to the news. You know, five minutes. I love fast forward. So, 
created for just as time as this. In uh, 17 through 19, it talks about the path of the upright. And in verse 19, it doesn't always seem, it's not always easy. It doesn't always seem easy to me anyway. But look at the alternatives. Verse 17, hatred, 18, dissension, laziness are the cause of the problems that the upright person does not have to face. We don't have to face those things. By comparison, his or her life is smooth. Does your life feel smooth? My life doesn't feel smooth. I'm just telling you. So when I, when I saw the writer that, and I was, I was reading uh, on some commentaries and, 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 and looking at the wisdom of people who have studied these words way before me, most of them are gone. Um, but when they looked at the original translations and they, they understood, and when we talk to people, when we go to Israel, and I talk to rabbis and I ask them, what, what were they taught about this scripture and the, the essence of how it was wrote? I have gained great wisdom in that. And so I do a lot of research when I'm looking at scriptures to make sure I just don't, pass it over. Because I believe if it's in here, it's important. Amen? Hallelujah. I love the word. In verse 22, um, it reminded me of people with tunnel vision. Those who are locked into one way of thinking. And they're likely to miss out on the right road because they have closed their minds to any new options. I, I am a very flexible individual. I used to be able to do gymnastics. I don't mean that kind of flexibility. I always want to, and Tyann's too big now. I'd have her do a cartwheel. She probably still could, but she's probably in heels today. It would be dangerous. So, yes, she says. Um, and so, but, but are you flexible to change? How are you about correction? You know, um, I think we, we look at it. I'll tell you what, if the Lord's correcting me, I am thanking him. I am on my knees, and I am thanking him for correction. If I'm off track somewhere, I want the Lord to show me that. I don't want to walk in that at all. And sometimes, you know, I, you know, we're not all perfect, but I'm almost there. Why are you just laughing back there at me? Is that Sean? Who was back there laughing? It's Tom. Somebody laughed. Keep saying it. You might, hey, you might as well confess the truth, right? He said we could be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to help those who can enlarge our vision and broaden our perspective. Seek out the advice of those you know who have a wealth of experience. And if you don't, you need new friends, Right? I have, I have a huge, I, I really do. I pour myself into that, um, into, you know, just, I, it's not that I'm a people person, but God knows this is my heart, so he puts these kinds of people in my life. And so if you don't have those kinds of people in your life, ask God to, do, he'll do it, but then you have to be open to it and receptive. Amen? Then be open to new ideas. How are you about change? I love change. Life is ever-changing. I love change. And be willing to weigh their suggestions carefully. Your plans will be stronger and more likely to succeed if you do this. And in verse 28, the godly weigh their answers. The wicked don't think before they speak because they really don't care about the effects of their words. It's important to have something to say, but it's more important to have something to say to think about what you're going to say first. Do you carefully plan your words, or do you just pour out your thoughts? And I wrote down, no filter. Do you know people with no filter? We need filters. Y'all, we need filters, okay? You just, I, I can do it too. I'll stop myself, and I'll apologize to my friends. I'm sorry. I just didn't need to share all that. You know? I don't got to get stuff out of me to you to invade your mind either. Uh, that's what David's for. I... <laughs> All right, you got a husband, husbands and wives, you can dump on each other. The rest of the world, leave them alone. All right. And be, the, be supportive. This wasn't part of my message, but be supportive to your husbands and wives when they need to dump. 
Because sometimes that's a heart, but if you're in the right place, if we're all in the right place in our relationship with God, then we can help our spouse. We should be able to help our spouses through that stuff and not take it on. Amen? That was for somebody. There you go. It's probably for me. Always saying. All right. Last scripture, Matthew 3, 1 through 3. Hallelujah. So it had been almost 30 years had passed since the events in chapter 2 between Matthew 2 and chapter 3. And here, John the Baptist, he just bursts onto the scene, right? And his theme is repent of your sins. The people need to repent. People do need to repent. People need to make a 180 turnaround, Right? from the kind of self-centeredness that ring, leads to wrong actions, such as lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, taking revenge, abusing and indulging in immorality. A person who turns from sin stops rebelling and begins to follow God's way of living prescribed in his word. That's what I did, right? Then God will receive us and help us to live the way that he needs us to and wants us to. You know, and remember that only God can get rid of sin. He doesn't expect us to be clean before we come to him. But once we come to him, he does expect us to clean up. It's quiet. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness... Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And so this is your message for this day. This scripture is, is it. This, this is the wilderness from which we live when we step out this door today. And within this wilderness, we prepare the way of the Lord for everybody we meet this week. Or we don't. It is your choice. But he wants us to prepare it. Make his path straight. Make it clear. I never want to be a stumbling block to a new believer. I never want to be a stumbling block to somebody that's living in sin. I always want to be able to make sure that not only the path that I am on is straight, but that I'm leading him that way too. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's stand. Hallelujah. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Praise the Lord. This is a prophecy that was quoted in Isaiah 43. Isaiah was one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament and one of the most quoted in the New. Like Isaiah, John here was a prophet who urged the people to confess their sins and live for God. Both prophets taught that the message of repentance is good news to those who listen and to seek healing, forgiveness of God's love. There are also people that inevitably will reject the truth of God's word. And I have to remind myself every day that I am not responsible for the outcome. I am responsible for presenting the truth. I am responsible for showing love. I am responsible for being kind. I am responsible. How about you? Father, I thank you this day that as we stand before you and have heard this word, that we know that all words that are given to us, Father, are different for each one of us. And I just thank you, Father, that you gave this word to me and you asked me to share it with these people that are listening here today. And I thank you, Father, that by the washing of the water of your word, that you will continue to supply the hearers here today with the joy and the abundance of your promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a need here today, 
stay and get prayer. There are a lot of strong believers in here that will pray for you. I will be here. I'm not always the last person out the door. Sometimes that's Talon. But he's, got a, he's looking at me now. He's got a little bit of it in him too. You may just, he probably wouldn't hug you. We are still doing social distancing. But uh, he's got a little dance, a little song he'd love to share with you, I'm sure. So he's so cute. Cashley's got eggs. Pastor has something to say. We ought to call him. I'll get in trouble if I don't. We're ready. Hallelujah. He does opening ceremonies. He's way past that. Good morning. Hello. So, say... I'm going to give everybody, a, by the way, wonderful word this morning. I enjoyed it very much. Thank um, you. It was a little in and out because my phone signal was in and out. I pushed the wrong button when you called earlier. Um, so uh, I it hung that up instead of answering it. Um, I am going to say that uh, I enjoyed the word today because... I preached on the confession of your mouth, and I heard the same kind of word today. What are, you, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this. I'm going to give everybody a math question. Okay. March 11th, 1994. Oh, that means that we've been married 26 and a half years because on March 11th, it'll be 27 years. Okay. Since she said, pastor's listening and he'll tell you. Because I've been married to the most wonderful lady in the whole world for, for that long. And uh, it's, it seems like it was yesterday. It's, uh, I enjoy her very much. Even if it's our turn to dump on each other. See, I did listen this morning. We make sure we listen to one another and uh, and meet each other's needs. Be helpmates. Amen. Um, hey, I, lo I love y'all, and uh, I'm actually uh, almost across Mississippi already in, into Alabama. Seems like I'm headed the wrong way to get on a plane to fly home. Uh, so uh, I will see y'all Wednesday night. Uh, we... Yep. Praise the Lord. Pray for Georgia. He's gonna pray for Georgia. Oh, you're back. Yeah, pray for you. Pray, pray for me. I'm going into Georgia. Uh, anyway. All right. Love you all. I'll see you Wednesday night. Okay. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. Hallelujah. Have a great week, everyone. Again, if you have a need, let us help you with it. Well, as you've watched the, the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that His plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the Word, we realize that the Word, uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that will be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven.
Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, uh, for any of you, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and, or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry, realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and by his blood, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Cowboy style of life is just different from, you know, living in a big city and having a suit and tie and, and uh, you know, we're all about Jesus here, but we wear our cowboy hats and our boots. And we have a heart for the youth in college here in Weatherford. We do buckouts and bull rides and team ropings and calf ropings and anything to do with arena events. We have a ride every uh, third Monday night of every month and uh, tonight we're going to just buck some bulls. We're going to have a little word. Uh, the rule is you need to be here by 7 o'clock and then we can say Jesus paid your fees and, and you get to ride for free. It's just like heaven. If you don't accept Jesus uh, before the gates close, then you don't get in and it's the same thing. We're going to look at uh, Mark, the 10th chapter tonight. Then in the oh, arena, man. it's simply, uh, it's time to just get real. That was a good rush. Get on the next one. We spend time with the kids. We don't just uh, get here and disciple them and, t and preach at them. We work behind the bucking shoots with them. Other than that, uh, it's, it's church.